This video is going to be about the adjustment in Carlson Survey GNSS. It's not going to be a complete lecture on all the ins and outs of a least squares adjustment. We're going to just look at uh, some practical guidelines about handling the adjustment result in Survey GNSS. So what we have here is a, uh, a small network and uh, I have uh, four vectors and uh, four known stations, one unknown station, so that means that um, I have a redundancy and when I have redundancy I need a least squares adjustment to give me the, um, the optimum solution. So in survey GNSS the least squares adjustment is over here on the compute, so I'm running the adjustment. Uh, what I can do now is I can create a file for Carlson ServNet, so you could combine GPS uh, uh, vectors with total station observations in ServNet. It's not possible in uh, Survey uh, GNSS, so uh, so that is an option. So um, bottom right, we have the the squares adjustment result. So as you can see here, we have uh, degrees of freedom, our redundancy, and um, what is what is important as a check is the uh, uh, the statistical test. So the statistical test indicates that the uh, the key square result should be within two limits, uh, which it is not at the moment. So we have a rejection on our statistical test. So that is something that uh, that we have to fix. Um, also if we look at our, our vectors over here and uh, we look at these uh, these columns we see our least squares correction. So I'm working metric now so we see that uh, we have corrections between let's say one uh, or tenth of a centimeter up to uh, to eight centimeters. So these are our least squares corrections. Now because we have a rejection on our statistical test um, we have to see what what went wrong and basically there are there are two possibilities. First of all you could have uh, you could have an outlier so you have uh, some sort of error in uh, one or more of the uh, of the vectors of the observations and another possibility is that your your overall accuracy is too uh, optimistic so that means there's not uh, a specific error specific outlier but the uh, uh, the accuracy of the observations of the vectors is just a little bit too uh, too optimistic now the first scenario would be there is some sort of an outlier. Now looking at the data, I see for instance that the uh, the fourth vector is of medium quality. So that could be a reason why the uh, why we have a, uh, a rejection of our test. So what we could do is see if we can improve the result and then rerun the adjustment. So I'm just clicking the vector and I say uh, recompute with options. We can change some, change some of the options. So let's say the elevation mask can bring that back to 13. That's more of a reasonable value. And we could also look for, for cycle slips. So if we go down here, enable disable satellites, we click that and then we see for uh, both stations, base and rover, we see an overview of the uh, of the satellites and also of uh, of cycle slips. So, for instance, uh, this GLONASS satellite, GLONASS number nine, is probably low on the on the horizon. So, we could remove it. GPS 32. We also see cycle slips there. 24. So we're just deselecting. Uh, 
deselecting these uh, these satellites, these signals. We we'll say OK, and we're gonna recompute now. Let's see what happens. And we have uh, a high quality. So we turn the uh, the medium quality into high quality. So we're selecting the vectors again. Uh, by the way, another option could have been that, let's say, if, if we were convinced that the problem was with this uh, uh, fourth vector, instead of recomputing it, we could also deselect it and then just run the adjustment with just uh, three vectors. If you have enough redundancy, that would also be uh, an option. But now we're going to use all vectors, including the recomputed one, and we're going back to compute and uh, network adjustment. And there we go. Now let's see what's ha what has happened. So actually, our result hasn't hasn't really improved, uh, and the software says fail optimistic. So apparently our uh, input accuracy was was too optimistic. So that's also something that uh, that we can fix. And too optimistic means, for instance, um, if you indicate that your your vectors have an accuracy of, of let's say, uh, one centimeter, and it turns out that the least squares correction is in the order of five centimeters, for instance, then that's not then then it's not balanced. Then you have been far too uh, too optimistic. So. Uh, uh, you need some sort of you need a, a, a balance. You need a, a realistic value for your uh, uh, input accuracy into the adjustment. So if you say I have an accuracy of one centimeter, and in order to make your network fit, the least squares adjustment applied on average also a one centimeter least squares correction, then that makes sense. That is balanced, and then you will not have a uh, a rejection uh, normally. So how do we uh, influence this uh, this input accuracy? Well, we go to Edit, Preferences, Adjustment, and this is where we can uh, can influence the uh, the weighting. And the weighting is uh, based on the on the input accuracy. So what I could do, for instance, there, there are three options. The variance factor is for, for scaling the, um, the accuracy from the, uh, the, the vector uh, computation. I could also use standard deviation, or I could use a, uh, a combination. Standard deviation, that could be based on, for instance, the specs of your receiver. So your receiver will probably have specs on the, uh, the accuracy of uh, uh, static surveying, which could be something like 5 mm plus 1 ppm. So that's what I'm going to use now as a, a model for the input accuracy for my adjustment. So 5 plus 1 ppm, I say OK. So I've changed that setting, and I'm going to run the adjustment again, network adjustment. Okay, and let's see our result. Bring it on the screen again. And now we have a we have a pass. So now we have a, we have a proper uh, result, or at least we have a, a pass on the statistical testing, which is already quite quite important. Um, the next step would then be to go to file if i'm if i'm happy with my uh, with my result so let's run that adjustment once more so i get a pass i'm happy with my result then i go to file and i say save adjustment if i say save adjustment the status of my unknown point went from uh, yellow to green and now I also see my uh, my accuracy. So I have a let's say two centimeter accuracy 
which is less uh, less than an inch so that is also something of course uh, that's also an important assessment of the result you know I can I can get a, a pass on my statistical testing but what what really does it mean for the end result so here is after I've given like I just showed after I selected save adjustment I see my uh, my accuracy after least squares adjustment so this will be the uh, the accuracy uh, horizontally and vertically of my new point which is also of course an important uh, assessment uh, so um, in short you do the adjustment you see if you get a, a pass on the statistical testing you can influence the testing by removing or recomputing outliers or by changing the factor weighting and then if you get a pass you save the adjustment and you do a final check on the uh, accuracy of the new points so that is in short uh, a guideline on how to handle the uh, adjustment in survey uh, GNSS thank you